Okay, as promised, I did a meta-analysis uh, using this format. Um, I should mention, um, you can find it here. Uh, there's a, if you go search uh, Dean Radin, comma, Science and the Taboo of Psy, you will find um, Dean Radin's talk at Google Tech Talk uh, at, at Google headquarters um, here on YouTube. And uh, in the video, near the very ending, um, Dean Radin, in his questions, answers a, um, uh, answers a question to somebody who said, uh, well, if met, you know, for meta-analysis, why don't you just simply take all the trials from all the studies of Gansfeld, like you know, from the beginning clean through to the end, and put them all together and take the total number of hits. And he thought that the, he bet that the significance would be, to would be lower uh, compared to if you actually uh, meta-analyze these in terms of size of significance times size of effect um, using standard meta-analytic meta techniques. Well, in my case, I'm going to take that skeptic's uh, arguments. Uh, apparently, it's statistically flawed, according to Dean Radin. But, you know, um, being a skeptic, I probably should take fellow skeptic's arguments to see about this. And let's take a look. I already pos uh, posted on the last uh, video what the results were individually from each of my experiments. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, if I compare all of them, um, I've got uh, 18,000 trials, 300, uh, sorry, 3,972 hits with odds of one in, um, let me actually space this out just to actually see what we've got here. Oh, that's actually quite big. We've got odds of one in 223,948,265,906. Uh, of this resulting by chance to tail. So needless to say, um, you know, if we're taking a look at meta-analysis in terms of total trials, that would be the case. But let's take a look here. The overall, uh, each of the original experiments, the very first blind clair open blind clairvoyance uh, study had 1,325 hits, 1,325. The second had 1,317. And the last one had 1,330 hits each. So um, uh, if, I, uh, divvy, if I divide each of these by uh, uh, going through consecutive order, 1, 3, 2, 5, divide by uh, 6,000 times 100, 22.083%, point, uh, 13, 17, divide by 6,100, 21.95%, uh, which rounds up to, an, oh, whoops, no, that is times 100. Yeah, once again, another 21.95, which uh, 21.95, uh, which rounds up to 22%. Let's take a look at the last one. 1330 divide by uh, 6,000 times 100. Oops, slight glitch. Try that again. Uh, 1330 divide by 6,000 times 100. There we go. 22.1%. So if we rounded it down overall, basically we're getting an effect size here of around 22%. We're basically getting a 2% increase. I'm, I basically have a, uh, according to the studies, if all is well, um, you know, if these, you know, uh, you know, barring, well, regardless um, of psi or not, um, basically what we're looking at here is that I have a, uh, okay. Basically what we're looking at here is that I have a capability of uh, to, of 22% uh, accuracy overall, a 22% accuracy level, according to um, you know 22% accuracy level, which means a 2% rise above chance. Not much, is it? Statistically significant in every one of the cases to the odds of one in thousand for replication, but it still only has 22% level increase. If I were a fraudulent claiming psychic. Um, I should have been claiming up near 70, 80, 90 percent accuracy, like most professional psychics actually do. So that actually does raise questions for me. And as a skeptic, this does. Um, now the thing is, I've now again, I'm going to explain as I've already explained before um, the likelihood of um, uh, the likelihood of this being uh, uh, sensory leakage, statistical compounding error, statistical misinterpretation. Again, all highly unlikely. Statistical fluke, now highly unlikely in the fact that there's now three studies, all of which have been, uh, now that the fact that it's been replicated twice with sign statistically significant effects, um, which meets another skeptical requirement in terms of replication. So that, you know, that makes it even more unlikely, which means that basically psi phenomena, uh, more specifically that I have clairvoyant capability, is looking a lot stronger. Um, at least uh, particular, uh, especially uh, which in conjunction with the tele telepathic experiments and stuff like that would also make my capability of having telepathy at say 27% level that much higher. But anyway, I digress. Um, 
so point being is that um, I guess that my overall uh, question, which I was working with, uh, which originally uh, caused me to test all this, uh, do magicians have psychic ability uh, when they're doing cold reading that they're not admitting to? Well, I don't know for a total, but I would admit, um, let me put my theory out this way. I would say it's possible. Um, I would say it's that much more possible. However, um, I, if my studies are correct, and uh, you know, if psi phenomena actually is what's playing in here, um, this effect is not very large. It's a very minute effect, and uh, it's more highly, it's more likely than not that, um, that this very small effect might allow for um, some above chance getting of results, um, you know, for readings. But it would only be an aid to cold reading and other magicians' techniques. Basically, uh, if psi exists, it's a very, very small effect, and at least in terms of natural form, it isn't really of much help to you. Um, you know, it would be a very interesting study for further, uh, you know, for further uh, scientific developments. Um, you know, just purely for, but, uh, but, it, but for beyond purely scientific curiosity, like string theory and the like, it has no practical application in the real world. Therefore, if you're going to a professional psychic or, any, or anything else, trust that they're using magicians' techniques. You know, it's more highly likely than not. And even if they do have psi phenomena, like psi, uh, if they, even if they do have real psi capability, it's a very minute capability. Uh, in terms of effect size, so I would recommend that you don't trust too much of what they're saying, okay? Or even if they do, in terms of future and the like, um, take it with a grain of salt. Now, um, my thoughts on um, debunking of psi phenomena in terms of contravening uh, large chunks of the... Um, okay, I recently came across, uh, I re did another re uh, review of the uh, Journal of Parapsychology, and I have three, rep uh, re I have three um, articles I would recommend you to. One of which is... Um, uh, pseudo uh, pseudoscience or pseudo criticism um, by oh god I've forgotten his name uh, but it's in the January 1979 edition of uh, the Journal of Parapsychology. There's another one in the June 1980 uh, in the June uh, sorry the Jan uh, the January 1980 by Marcelo Truzzi, uh, which was talking about um, uh, Paul Kurtz's work on uh, Parapsych. And then there's one called Hume's Fallacy uh, in the June 1981 issue of uh, Parapsychology uh, the Journal of Parapsychology by Christian Arau. And um, basically, I would like to um, go over a couple of brief points while I'm here. Um, there are two reasons why uh, suggesting that, um, that parapsychology or that psychic phenomena are non-existent because there's no mechanism or they contradict the mainstream laws of physics is actually fallacious for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of which is the fact that um, it's actually based off Hume's fallacy, which is a tautology that, uh, that basically uh, miracles... Um, uh, miracles don't exist. Therefore, any evidence presuming to uh, therefore any evidence presuming to be a, uh, to support a miracle is fallacious. Uh, it, sorry, is wrong. Um, but uh, you know uh, would not be able to prove a uh, you know is wrong. Well, basically, um, well anyway, that issue explain the article explains it a lot better. I can give you the full um, references if you need me to. Um, I've got access to it uh, at my local library. But basically, the point is that um, there's two reasons. One of which is that. Um, Experimental evidence. Do, um, uh, this is a uh, this uh, is good for religious issues, but it's not good for scientific issues. Um, you know that contradicts the known laws of physics, uh, primarily because of the fact that um, various things, including uh, Newton's theories of gravity, um, Einstein's theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, continent, uh, con uh, continental drift, and uh, germ theory diseases, all at various different points. Uh, even heliocentric, uh, even the heliocentric solar system, all at various points, actually contradicted the known laws of physics at the time period. Uh, and the second issue, of course, is the fact that uh, um, ju uh, if empirical evidence comes for it, um, if the other issues, um, if other issues are, um, if the other known laws of physics do not explain the uh, empirical data, um, they. Uh, you know, uh, to say that uh, that some, that anomaly can be rejected purely because it contradicts the known laws of physics, um, if the known laws of physics don't uh, account for it, or if normal explanations don't account for it, that's not a reason to reject empirical data. That's a uh, okay. So basically, um, to quote that is Hume's fallacy, and um, uh, you know, again, it's one um, inappropriate technique of dealing with parasite phenomena. Uh, now, of course, I've got plenty of other resources, and I've already explained in other detail in other videos about. Um, problems in skeptical arguments and the like. Uh, I've done tons of corrections on a large chunk of stuff. Um, now, I would say that um, in terms of psi phenomena, uh, at least for my own uh, work, it seems to be that much more compelling, at least for me, but that's just because I've been doing experiments myself. Um, but I would say that it's still at the compelling level, and I still um, like to um, see further replication before I take it for 100% irrefutable. Okay? I'm just more open-minded to the idea of psi now. Um, and that includes to my own side. I'm still admitting the possibility of a statistical fluke. Only time will tell. Toodles.